The following is a short installation video of what we're calling our two inch panel systems and that will include a few different versions here, Unigroup, Unigroup 2 in a places that we'll see in a minute. A lot of similarities, a lot of components and things can go back and forth. Uh, so there are some similarities but there are some differences too so we're going to point some of those out and we're going to go through a little bit of the product here before we actually start installing some things. Uh, this is the traditional Unigroup. It's been around for a long time. Uh, some round radius top caps and things like that. A lot of the T-molding end panels on the overheads and shelves and things like that. T-molding surfaces. We are starting to go away from a lot of those things and go into, this is the refresh, this is the Unigroup 2 where we've done some different things where we have the steel boxes, the adaptable overheads that work on all the different systems, 2 and 3 inch. The adaptable depth work surfaces that again will go on to all the different systems and end panels. So a lot more common parts than there used to be um, in the past. Unigroup 2, um, some of the big differences are it's a flatter, crisper looking panel. It doesn't have as much fiber padding here so it doesn't have that pillowy look to it. It's a little crisper. It's a squared off top cap so there is some end plugs and some finished things here that you don't have to do with Unigroup because they're self-sealing uh, radius caps. Installation wise, again, rail, the hinge, they're all going to go together the same way. Um, but we just wanted to get you comfortable with this. The power, the raceway covers, the same on all the two inch lines. Uh, we do have add-ons with Unigroup 2 and we also have those with Unigroup. Unigroup 2 right now it is glass but I believe that's also going to be fabric soon and we'll get to some of those things in the hands-on portion of that. So just wanted to see what's out there now, what has been out there and what is yet to come. Now let's take a look at the Places product. This is the Places product. Again looks very similar. A uh, smaller lower profile top cap which is common today. You're going to see that also in the Unigroup 2 as opposed to the Unigroup. Again, still a rail and hinge, the same installation process, so we don't need to cover all of these since there's a duplication. Uh, power, electrical, raceway covers, all the same. Work surfaces, all the same. Some of the aesthetic differences, of course, you've got different ways to get technology into the panel with places. It's more of the upgrade of the two inch line. Uh, there's more cable management within the system and things like that which Unigroup and Unigroup 2 do not have. You also have some nice aesthetic things if you want to. It is optional. Do you want to finish this end off or do you want just a painted rail? That's an option today that Unigroup and Unigroup 2 do not have um, along with some of the traditional places overheads where it's a more radius end, uh, no T-molding like the Unigroup versions, a steel pole on the bottom. Again what we would probably recommend today is going to the adaptable overhead. That's what we're seeing more of our customers do on to our two inch platform. Um, so the same panel core but with latest and greatest components and so we're going to take you a walk through that and see how it goes together. Before we get started with the installation I just want to show a couple specific tools, standard uh, installation tools are required with your power gun and things like that. A rubber mallet, you're going to go a long way in life with that, especially with our two-inch system here, so that's a must. Uh, and some unique things are the side rail disengagement tool, which you'll see here in a minute for the side rails, and also the top anti-dislodgement clip disengagement tool. A long word, but it's a it's a inexpensive little tool and, and keeps you from damaging some of the returns and, and things like that. We'll cover that as we start to set some panels. Next we're going to go, um, the start of an installation other than your unloading is going to be making rails. The two inch system does come with all the complete parts, however you have to put them together. That's why we need people like us to do this. And what we're going to do is take two of our rails and our hinge set and actually slide these in and make a connection. Now. I'll just tell you because sometimes this is a job the new person gets. You want to make sure that these knockouts which go into the panel pockets are in the right orientation. Uh, as, as the people make an inline you don't want one upside down and things like that and it is on certain sizes easy to do. If you look at the pockets they're not that much difference. So there is room for a little bit of error on certain sides so make sure the new people are doing them right and we'll take them put them back to back. We'll take our hinge sets uh, and all the hinge sets are in the instructions. If you open up the instructions for panels it's going to tell you what sizes go where. So even though we're using three pieces, why do we use three pieces? It's just easier to work with for us than one long piece especially with 80 inch panels and taller panels. So this seems to work good. We can slide these down for the top or the bottom. And what we're actually making here is a 90 degree connection but because we are in a hinge system it can be anything in between so we can hit a lot of infinite angles with this. Uh, our surfaces and things kind of dictate 
the angles we use, which are common. So 90, 120s, 135s are our common elements within the two inch uh, system. Some of the different side rails. Again, this type of side rail is gonna work for all the two inch line. Notice some of the aesthetic difference. This is the unigroup or unigroup two inch rail. This is the places rail. Uh, we still have our slotted standards for our components inch on center, but just the return flange is minimized to minimize the framing in effect. Uh, that's something that came about when we introduced places uh, roughly 18 years ago. Some other differences, notice the hole on the top. It's always on the top. What is that for? Communication cables can run through from panel to panel at the top. It doesn't get done a lot, but you do have the opportunity to take your cables and, and keep them away from the power and put them at the top of the panel for easier access and things like that for accessibility. So that's one of the, the bigger uh, performing differences on the places line, integrated top channel capacity for cable management where the other two, Unigroup and Unigroup 2, do not have that. So we've got a 90 degree made up, or again, anything in between. I say 90 because I'm gonna actually take a, a cosmetic or a finished post and this is a fabric one, and I know it's Unigroup 2 wide because, again, the crisp square edge, the tight radius that Unigroup 2 has, where radius and places have a little more softer edge, not quite this hard edge. So what we're going to do, and they all install the same from the top or the bottom, we're going to put these into the same slots that the actual hinge went into, and this would now dictate that this is a 90 degree connector and nothing else, since I've got this finished post in. How we're actually going to mount this on the panel, First, let me explain a couple things about the, uh, again, focus on Unigroup 2 right now, Unigroup 2 panels. This is probably the cheapest way Hayworth has to sell a, a panel. The Unigroup 2 line is our lowest price panel. Again, the crisp detail, a little bit thinner fiber pad uh, for a crisper look. This is the monolithic panel. It comes this way. It comes ready to go out of the box, just like the Unigroup in places have for years. Now, the other version that we have with Unigroup 2 is the it's the same inner core this is how our panel basically looks underneath but it comes undressed like this and we're going to actually take inserts and put it in here whether it's a full height inserts whether it's segmented insert and that's the real feature of unigroup 2 allows you to do some on-site changes of color uh, and aesthetics without ripping down without refabricating they are used together a lot uh, why because this is cheaper you put it where you need it you put it where you're going to load it up with components and not see the aesthetic differences where this is mainly used for um, hallways, insides, places where you can see some of the difference in the segmentation and some of the uh, advantages of that style of panel. So we're going to go ahead and put these two panels together since that is a real life scenario. Now we have these pockets every nine inches, these two T pockets in the side of the panel. That's what these are going to latch into. So we're going to get some strength throughout the length of that panel. So what we'll do is take our panel we're going to start at about an inch or so above the panel, get everything lined up, and we're going to push that down. And what we're going to use to help that, here's where we get into the tools. A rubber mallet and a side rail seating tool that will go in that slots and pop that down. It's going to do it without damaging, it's going to do it without marring the surface. Yes, there are different creative ways to put these rails on cantilevers, a lot of different things out here. This works nice because again the screws are recessed, it doesn't scar anything and it works for seating them, for taking them off and you always have it. Uh, it's not like a cantilever where that might be on the next truck with the components and if you don't have one you have nothing to, to readily put these panels together. So uh, it's a cheap price. If you need any tools or have any questions on anything you see in this video, whether it's tools or product, make sure you talk to your local uh, tech rep who's in your area and can help you with training installation issues, uh, tools, and anything that you have questions on. So we've got it on one panel. Now what we're going to do is raise this next rail, bring a panel in, and seat the rail down, and it just keeps going. Um, what, what's going to give us our strength is not only the steel panel with a steel skin, not much you can do to this thing with damaging it, but also the knuckle connections at the bottom. I've got a knuckle connection on here, so every panel is going to notch and mate at this. So even though we are in a hinge system, there's no vertical moving between the panels because we're locked together with these steel glide housings, and that's what allows us to load. Between that and the construction allows us to load up this two-inch system like no other one out there. So that's a nice feature of this system. So what we'll do is we'll raise this panel or this rail about an inch or so. We're going to actually bring that next panel in, and we're going to make those ears connect at the bottom. And once the ears are connected, then again, we're going to do the same process. We're going to seat this rail down from either side. 
and it'll seat that down. So not much to setting the panel. Uh, it probably took longer to hinge the rail than it did to set the panel. And a lot of this is done up front. The truck's unloaded. Uh, before the truck's even unloaded, you've got installers working on these 90s and inlines and three ways and four ways, hinging those out. So once those are made, you can start to bang the panels out. Panels, like with most systems, are the fastest part of the installation. So getting some of this work done up front uh, while the truck's being unloaded will speed up your, up your job. So there's our 90 degree connection. Uh, one thing I want to show you on this 90 degree is an option that Unigroup 2 has where none of the other ones do. Again, it's maybe for more of a frugal market. This is a little cheaper panel than Unigroup if you're trying to save some money. Uh, finish post, are they optional? Yes, you do not need that. It's not part of structure. Uh, sometimes cosmetically it looks a lot better, but it is not part of a structure and is optional. But what you could do is actually put a steel finish post in. Uh, for good or bad, the steel ones are less money. They look good. It's just that they slide in a little different. Due to ceiling heights, that last one I slid in when I made it, which was the nice way to do it. It helps the installation of the panels. But if you're in a scenario where you've got a tall panel and a short ceiling, you don't have room to slide that in and out, the plastic is forgiving enough where you can bend it and work it out with about two feet above it to make it work. Now with steel, obviously I can't bend steel, or I can, I just can't bend it back. Uh, so what we've done is we've come up with a different way to install these. Uh, every steel finish post will ship with little black hinges like this. And what these will do is we will just slide that in place. Now I no longer need space above the panel to do this. So there's your other option. Again, a little less price uh, installation time, very similar. Um, so keep that in mind. There are some different options. When it gets to the end, the end of the scenario, with the two-inch systems, we're mainly going to just put a different connector. As you saw earlier, just like all these systems have here, we'll put that down. That is the end. That is the connector. That is the end of run. It's a dual purpose. We'll make sure also, and I'm bending these over because this panel was used, but these are the anti-dislodgement clips that we have here at the top, so when the rail is down, it's not going to accidentally come up and disengage. There is a safety clip that will have to be manually pulled back to do that to allow me to take this rail down and change it. That is a safety feature. That is something we look for um, on job inspections and certification training and things like that. Those are the little safety things that have to be in place uh, when the system's up, whether it's been reconfigured or not. So keep that in mind. Those are, are part of the system and need to stay there. On the end, finished, you have the places, one with a notch. How would you get rid of that notch? Uh, we actually send a filler. You're going to find this two-inch product is about as easy as it gets to order, specify, put together. Very simplistic. Uh, not so many parts and pieces. Some of these little things, when we do make something like this, that will be in the hardware box. So we're going to give you a plug that will go in here to seal that off. Uh, it's not a specification thing. You don't have to worry about not getting enough. So you can put that in. If that is not nice enough and you want to spend a little more money, we would love to see you do that. Uh, but that's where we're going to go, like the places we saw a minute ago where the fabric or veneer or vitine end of run, a little cosmetic pieces on here just to give a little more upscale look. So that's a different option with places. But Unigroup, Unigroup 2, this is your final solution. So we'll put the other one on the other end here. Now that I have these rails on, you may start to notice on this, this Unigroup 2, because of this rail on the connector, I've got a space behind here. What we're actually going to do now is slide in an insert, and this rail will hold it in. Now, since the places did not have that rail, this insert option is not available on places. It's on a Unigroup 2 product only uh, due to the side rail and how we connect them together. So we're going to go ahead and get some inserts and pop these in. Next, we're going to put some different inserts on. We're going to go with shorter ones, multiple inserts. Again, two different ways to put them in. Drop it down from the top or slightly bend it. Get it behind the rail. Again, make sure that you're down on all sides. Now, with the segmented rails, you will receive a trim strip, a horizontal trim strip, specified uh, to whatever color, trim color you want. And what we're going to do is put that, like the pad, behind the rail. 
and it's actually going to nest over the insert. You want to make sure you're down all the way. If I've got multiple, t multiple inserts here and I'm not down all the way, by the time I get to the top it's going to be too tall. So you want to make sure as you do this you're nested all the way. What we're going to do now with panels that are 30 inches and wider, when we put this insert in, we're actually going to give you a small screw that goes in and will conceal that center to keep the panel from getting a little a pillowy effect. Then what we're going to do is we'll take another towel. Keep in mind this is insert has changed a little bit recently, but the tag will designate the top. There are some directional fabrics out there, either 90 degrees directional, 180 directional. You're going to look at the sticker. That gives us the date it's made, the color of fabric and everything else. It also designates the top. So keep that in mind when you're inserting your tiles. Okay, we'll nest that in. So that's the look you get. Um, Time-wise from the installation, yes, it's a little more work than this one is, so it does add a little bit, but not that much. They do just slide into place. Remember, tag the screw in the center only, not every hole available, just in the center. So that's the multiple inserted look. We'll keep those on now. Now I think we're going to talk about some of the top trim. Top trim is a little different between the, the two-inch platform. If you've seen some of this Hayworth product before, you've seen the Unigroup or the places which comes with a plastic corner piece, two-way and three-way with plastic wings. Depending on what application, you may have to take your box knife and rip one of these off, depending on if it's a high-low application. The plastic lets you do that. We have uh, gone to metal parts on Unigroup 2. Uh, even the trim parts, they are die-cast parts. So when you see all these visible parts, a couple different reasons. Metal is better for the environment than some of the PVCs and plastics that we've used, so we're trying to control that. Also, the painting uh, with the metallic flake and things like that. When we paint metal, then we paint plastic. They don't always look exactly the same. So by going to an all-metal substrate, we're getting more consistency on how they look. So this is the two-way version, the metal Unigroup version, Unigroup 2. Here's the plastic version. Again, can I cut these and modify them? No. So that's the difference in Unigroup 2. It's a hard cast piece. This is my two-way for here. If I was going to a high-low, you would actually have to get a different piece. So we have the three-ways available. We have the two-ways. We have all the different options, but it is a specification piece. We have the 120s two-way, a 123-way, all the different options. It's up to the specifier to get you the right one. But just keep in mind, it won't be the field modification that you've done before. So we'll put this one on top here. Some of them are fairly tight. You may have to take your rubber mallet and give them a little tonk down. That's my two-way piece. Uh, we also have an end of run piece. I'm going to spin this this way. So you can see this. The end of runs, again, it's a square rectilinear top cap cut to length. So now the end is exposed and open, which it wasn't before. So do I need to trim there? Yes, I do. Uh, do we give you one with a panel? Yes, we do. So depending on your application, most of the times you will have even extra of these. Uh, now keep in mind the finished post, non-finished post application. I did tell you they were optional, but if I don't have the finished post in the back, now it's open and I need more of these. So on Unigroup 2, you may get into some situations, depending on how the designer uh, laid out your system, where they would have to order more of these out of the catalog. Uh, generally, if I'm using finished post, you'll have extra, so keep that in mind when you're doing that. Now I've got the clips on the panels ready to go, and what I'll do is take this clip and pop it down into place. So they will snap into place, virtual, uh, as opposed to the Unigroup, which had more of a rolling action to lock it over clips. This is just a down in place. A couple other little pieces I want to show you, or at least one other little one, is this one. This will also come with the panels. This is for an inline condition. If this was another panel coming out this way, I wouldn't use my end of run piece but I would use a similar inline piece that would pop down and now a cap could come off both ways. So a couple little more trim pieces than you've seen before in Unigroup in places, uh, but they are included with a panel, so it's not a specification thing. It's just a matter of the installer putting them in place. So again, you're going to want to do your end of runs and two ways and all those before the top caps, and then you can go down and seat those on. Now that you've seen the square profile and how the Unigroup 2 installs, just for a reference, Next to it, we have the traditional Unigroup. Notice the clips are different, the gold clips. Uh, we do have a steel top cap with round radius self-sealing edges. So instead of a pop-on with some different trim, 
it's going to be taking this one on in more of a rolling action. Get it on one side and pull it forward. Make sure it's set side to side. A little bit of insulation. Now that's Unigroup. Now we'll take a look at places. Here we have the places panel. It is exposed. I don't have the cap on yet. This is the inverted trough I was kind of referring to earlier. Remember the places side rail had the notch in the top for cables to go through. This is where cables would go through. And so we can keep them as a lay-in uh, situation. We've gone to different clips for our top caps, which will not uh, adhere to or get any, any issues with running your cables. The rolled steel top cap, a lower profile than the Unigroup, a little thinner design. Steel legs that will just bottom out into those plastic pieces. So when you're ready to put it on, again, here's the end of run piece, which you saw with places only. We'll take that and just pop that into place. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about the utilities. Uh, it doesn't get any easier with the, with the two-inch program. It is a great power system. It comes factory installed in most cases. There's a few cities where it doesn't. Uh, this is what we call a PDA, or a power distribution assembly. It's the power blocks on the bottom of a panel. You can see the three-footer already has them. They come shipped that way, ready to go, ready to accept a flux connector, which will jump power to the next panel. This one actually is from this panel here that you can see a little easier this way. Uh, it's got the quarter turn attachment methods. So yes, you can attach this on and off to a standing panel. And there's no different colors or handedness to this. Uh, it it's, goes both directions. Uh, the panel, when ordered for power, will also ship with a flexible power connector. And this will bring all the circuitry from one panel to the next. Um, there are three circuits with this system and three neutrals. And then a ground, an isolated ground, eight wires all together. Uh, notice the center ones, those are the ground and the isolated ground, protrude a little bit farther. I don't know if you can see that or not. Just a safety feature so when you're moving receptacles, the last thing to disconnect is the ground for safety purposes. Now the flex connector, the way it's designed is yes, there really is no way to do this wrong. I can set this on in either direction. And what you're going to do is snap it into there so the little thumb clips grab both sides. So as I yank extension cords, vacuums, whatever. I don't have to worry about power interruption because I am clasped here at the end of it. Uh, it also does different angles. So this power connector will be good for your corners and things like that. It is flexible enough to do that. Uh, this is the common one. This will do 90% of everything on the two inch line. There are some longer ones for pass-throughs and different things, but this is the common one that we use every day. Here is the receptacle. It is a duplex, two places to plug in, and it also is programmable. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a single dot, a double dot, and a triple dot. Uh, one of them has the white circle in, meaning it's on designated on circuit three now. What the installer will do is put that on what it needs to be. If the designer says, I want my computers on three or two or whatever, uh, follow your electrical plan, put this to desired location, and it's ready to install. And again, integrated locks on here. So once the receptacle's in, you don't have the worry of, is it going to come loose? Am I going to lose my computer? Am I going to lose my data? And things like that. So that will also install the same way and lock onto there. Is how, as far as how to get the power into the system, I don't have one here. A typical base feed will come in and power it here. We also have top feeds. If you want to come in from the ceiling, come down inside the panel. There is a vertical uh, drop on each side of the panel and come in here um, so you're really unlimited on where you want to bring your power in. Is it the floor? Is it the wall? Is it a column? Is it the ceiling? Uh, we have things that are going to get it into the system. And as far as getting it through the system, you're going to use this. And as far as getting the power out of the system, the receptacle. Again, I can put them on either side, both sides of the panel. So there's really not a shortage of that. What you don't have with the Unigroup and Unigroup 2 is the power up at these different heights. Uh, I think when you saw the places station earlier, you saw some integrated power and communications and things like that, which you could do with this system. And, and a lot of it has to do with the inserts and all the different options. We chose not to do it. But what is real common, if you need to get power to different options, we have, yes, some call this a glorified extension cord, but this will plug in. It will clamp on to a surface, a conference table, anything you need to along the back edge and leave you power and also a pop in for data. So this is a the same quality of power, it's just a little more flexible. You can put it where you need it. And this comes with a six foot cord or even a 12 foot cord to get you out to return panels rather than powering every panel to get a receptacle out at the end. You could put on something like this and again, it's easily moved. So keep that in mind. That is a, a, a good power solution for the two inch products. That will conclude our power. Now we'll take a look at raceway covers. 
At this point, you would probably have everything up, everything is leveled. I didn't uh, go over that with you, but we do have an inch and a half adjustment, vertical adjustment on our panels, or on this particular uh, two inch panel line. The foot is in integrated in the panel. What we also ship with it in that kit of components and hardware is a carpet gripper. We have this on all of our panel systems. It's a round disc with little sharp points that will embed into the carpet, and it will actually snap and become part of the foot. Once your panels are lined up level and you have them lined up, what you'll do, uh, either turn it by hand or a pliers or, or a little glide wrench if they exist anymore, uh, is going to take that. And it's one per intersection. So here we got an intersection of two panels. One will get a gripper. Not every foot, just one at every intersection. And of course, you're going to have to be careful when you snug that down. You don't want to keep turning because what you're going to do is raise your panel and throw everything off. So you just got to snug that to the ground. If you ever need to move the system, you can raise, take the pressure off this, move the panel system, and then tighten it back down. It kind of snaps and becomes integrated and part of that foot. So that's a nice uh, feature that we use on all our systems. Why? You've got a 12-pack of offices. The spine is 40 feet long. After years slamming doors and flipper doors and things like that, you want it to stay where it is. This keeps it nice and neat and clean. Now we're going to go ahead and put up a raceway cover. Here's a raceway cover. We've got the knockouts for our duplexes. Uh, if I'm going to put a receptacle there, it's a matter of taking this out, sliding it over. It is self-storing, uh, which is a great feature. So when I reconfigure, I don't have a cover minus a window that I have to find receptacles to match up to those openings. So it's within the cover. We can slide it back, and you can put it right back in place to look brand new again. So that is a nice feature. This one is not the standard cover, but you can order it this way with communications. We've got offset communications holes. If you want your data face place to put in here, you can order the panel with that hole rather than have to cut it in the field or, or wondering who's going to cut it. And this will be the EC10, which again comes with a panel that will just finish off this end piece. What we're going to do is slide this underneath. Again, my panels are up, they're leveled, I slid that underneath. If this was a real installation and this was the main spine, I may leave this down to let the cable guy come and string his cables. No sense spending the time to put everything up to take them back down again. So again, like with most jobs, you're going to find the installers and cable people have to work together very closely, timing-wise, to, to, uh, to not have any redundancy on some of this product going up. So what we'll do then is we'll take this raceway cover, start it at the end, and either with your hand or a rubber mallet, if you're going to do a bunch of them, carefully put this in place. Now in the Unigroup 2, I do have clips behind here which will bottom out. So you're going to want to be careful you don't hit this too hard and hit that clip and crack it. This one is plastic on here. So just kind of get that in to look nice, start it at the end. We'll tuck it underneath the rail and now we'll go ahead and put up the other side. We'll get this turned a little bit, uh, and this may show you too, I don't have the insert in here, and you can see, if you take a look at the top, these black clips, that's where my insert comes down and rests, so when I push my cover in, it's going to hit that and stop and not go any further, but between the clips, it could. So you got to watch it with the Unigroup 2 so you don't get a wavy look, but the standoffs are what's going to stop you. And so we've got those on, we've got our finished post here. Uh, the last cover is going to be a two-way cover here, which we'll put on. Now, the Unigroup 2 is a little bit different than Unigroup in places, and it's actually going to attach to the cover versus the post. And that's going to be the same little, little knobs that we had on the, on the EC10. So those would snap into here and then snap into the joining cover on the other side. Now, in that scenario where, where let's say, I didn't use a finish post, what would you put here? If I've got power and data down here, you do have to cover that and have that covered. So you could order a power cover, which is still the bottom piece, but it has a top on it so you won't see the power and utilities, and then go without a finish post. That is an option. Again, keep in mind some of the little trim pieces you may have to order. So I'm not recommending that, but it is an option. And this will just show you, this is places Unigroup. Notice the radius piece, and now this is the Unigroup 2, the more squared look. So that's some of the aesthetic differences uh, on the trim. And that takes care of the bottom of the panel. The last thing I want to show you on uh, the panel situation is putting on an add-on. Add-ons are very uh, 
popular today. They can give you a different look if you're putting on glass or frosted glass or things like that. You can also put on fabric. Uh, so we'll give you a different look or different color. It's an aesthetic thing. Uh, the first thing you need to do before putting an add-on is remove the top cap, obviously, and then we're going to take the clips off. Those will interfere, so no matter what family it is, Unigroup 2, Unigroup Places, you're going to remove these top clips. Every add-on will come with a spacer or horizontal alignment piece. They're usually eight-shaped. Now the Unigroup 2 has a deep end and shallow side. Uh, the other ones are symmetrical. So this one is unique to Unigroup 2. And what we're going to do is put that over this panel to give us a horizontal reveal. Now that we have that, we're going to take the actual add-on. I went ahead and popped the side rails on. It's a little bit different installation process than the lower or the base panels. And we have a bayonet that will slide into this opening. We do have a cavity and opening on each side of every fabric panel, so we're going to use that for the connectors to go on down into. There is a bayonet for glass on fabric, which we're going to do here. There's also a bayonet for glass on glass. It's a little different, and there's one for, one for fabric on fabric. So there's three of them. Uh, you have to make sure you order the right ones, obviously. But then it's a matter of more of a press fit to get this down and pop that in place. Now I've done an isolated one here. If there was another one next to it, you would install it the exact same way and then take your hinge and slide it in. So again, a little different than below where you're hinging your rails and adding panels on. Now it's done a little different. So now you can go ahead and pop your top cap right on the top here. The clips are already here. Uh, one other thing I want to mention as long as I'm over here. Different height situation. What do you do with Unigroup replaces? Now I've got this and I'd have to cut off this wing so that I can still use this piece. And that's why this one is gone. It's the exact same application. Uh, keep in mind with a die cast, if I'm doing a field change from this to this, this needs to be gone and I will need another piece with just one set of legs coming out. So a little bit different with Unigroup 2 versus Unigroup in places. Um, that's the end of the panels. Uh, let's take a look at some components. The way we do it today with all the two inch product is a different cantilever. It's not a pop and go or a cleat system. It's a flat surface we put on and put screws into. This is the two inch cantilever now. Uh, they are left and right handed. It's got a little rectilinear knockout here for mainly for design, but uh, if you wanted to stick an extra cord or something through there, you could. Uh, it's got the teeth and the, the half moon hook again for safety. Something can't fall off the panel unless it comes all the way up into this position for a safety feature. A few holes on here for different purposes, but we use the back hole and the third hole on all our surfaces. There will be pre-drilled holes for that. So once you put your surface on, they will line up with this. So what we'll do is take this here, make sure it's down all the way. And on the other side, we have some options. This is Unigroup. Uh, there are a lot of fully cantilevered surfaces, so I could put my left hand surface in here and go on. Uh, but again, in life there are a lot of options. What I'm going to show you is doing it, which will be a little stronger and also a little cheaper. I'm going to tie my 24 inch deep work surface into this 24 inch panel by use of corner brackets. So if I take these and put them on, now my surface will be tied into this panel to the floor so I'll have, instead of a fully cantilevered surface, a little stronger application. Uh, again, on Unigroup you could do it either way, uh, but this is a cheaper and stronger method. So keep that in mind. The cantilevers are specified so you can do what you want. Order the proper brackets the way you want to have it installed. So we've got our brackets in place. We'll take our surface, and again, the surfaces are pre-drilled for all the applications I'm going to show you here, whether it's a cantilever, whether it's a corner bracket, or even a work surface support panel, they're all going to be pre-drilled holes for this. So I would take my panel, square it up, then I would go underneath, put the screws into the pre-drilled holes. Again, I've cantilevered here, I'm corner bracketed here. And what we do ship with every surface in the hardware box is a mending plate. What the mending plate will do, and this is also pre-drilled, that will take this and tie these two surfaces together at the front to keep this gap nice and even. The installers make this nice, and again, years of slamming flipper doors and drawers and things, you don't want things to move. That's why we use the carpet anchor on the panels. That's why we use these on the surfaces to tie the surfaces together. And again, they are included with the surface. Nothing is separately specified. So the, you've seen how we tie it into corner brackets, you've seen how we tie it into cantilevers. Uh, what we have over here, it's already installed, 
put this as an end panel. Very popular. You see them all the time for strength, for looks, to conceal things. Uh, there are different depths to match the sur surface depths. But again, this now is our new standard on all of our systems, two inch panels, three inch panels. Uh, when I say two inch or three inch, I'm talking the thickness of the panel. What we do is just put different brackets on it, whether you want it for unigroup, unigroup two in places, that's one set of brackets, or we have a couple other family systems. So again, common parts, different bracketry is gonna let it go on all the different systems.